Fallout 3 has a lot of different weapons, but there's really only a handful that players will genuinely use throughout the game. Combat shotguns and plasma rifles come to mind, but what if you wanted to use a glorified piece of wood instead? In today's video, we'll be finding out if you can beat Fallout 3 using only a baseball bat. Mother Nature said it was time to find my own place, so I chose to be a boy, gave myself an appropriate name, and made my way through the tutorial. Choosing 9 strength because the baseball bat was a melee weapon, 9 intelligence for the skill points, and 4 charisma for the child at heart perk. I spent the majority of my birthday reading the notice board, avoided Beatrice and her poem, killed the radroach, and took the goat. Choosing lockpick, melee weapons, and science. After a 3 year snooze, a martyr suggested getting some fresh air. I grabbed the baseball bat and made anything red, dead. I also helped Butch, which resulted in him handing over his tunnel snake's jacket. Wearing this increases melee weapons by 5 points, so until I find something better, I'll be using this. Outside the vault I hit level 2, increasing explosives, melee weapons, and repair, also choosing the Lady Killer perk. More to see if there was any unique dialogue options I could use, rather than for the 10% damage increase against female enemies. After looting Springvale I went to Megaton, ignored Lucas Sims, repaired the pipes, and hit level 3, increasing lockpick and melee weapons, also choosing the Swift Learner perk. I then made my way to the crater side supply, trading everything I wasn't going to use for another baseball bat, a radiation suit, and as many stim packs as I could afford, also doing the same with Doc Church. With a bountiful supply of stim packs, I went to Moriarty's saloon, sided with Mr. Burke, rigged the bomb to explode, and before leaving Megaton forever, went to the sheriff's home to collect the strength bobblehead. I usually have no problem entering his house, but I also usually disarm the bomb, so I think until that is done, the sheriff simply won't let me inside his house. My lockpick skill wasn't high enough, and I really wanted that bobblehead. So I dragged a barrel from the crater side supply, got into position, and used the roof hatch to get inside, grabbed the bobblehead increasing my strength to 10, and left for Tenpenny Tower. The journey wasn't too bad, lots of wildlife, I rescued a scavenger who immediately tried selling me a Nuka-Cola Quantum for 100 caps, I politely declined, pressed on, and found three wastelanders near Tenpenny Tower searching for Oasis. They also tried to kill me, and I was actually surprised by how quickly my health declined, although they didn't take too long to kill, which was nice. Across the road I spoke to Gustavo, spoke to a guard, spoke to Mr. Burke, and Megaton went boom. My reward for this atrocity? A hundred caps and a new house. Where I met Godfrey, drained him dry, took a nap, and caught Alistair shooting from his balcony. I was curious to see what he was shooting at, so I killed him, took a look, saw nothing, and left Tenpenny Tower, half expecting the guards to kill me. They didn't, so... I left peacefully and headed towards one of the most obscure locations in Fallout 3, the Dunwich Building. Along the way I killed a ghoul at the Warrington train yard and hit level 4, increasing lockpick and science, also choosing the educated perk for more skill points. Some raiders, mole rats, and a rad scorpion later, which took 15 hits to kill, I was standing outside the Dunwich Building. Now my reason for coming here was to collect the melee weapons bobblehead from the virulent under chambers. The only problem was that it had been literally years since I had been here and couldn't remember which way to go. I could have used the Fallout wiki, but where's the fun in that? It wasn't long until I was hallucinating and facing a glowing ghoul, which really messed me up. Come to think of it, so did Roma's, which took 11 hits to kill. One rookie mistake I had made was not buying any Radaway when I had the chance, and it didn't take long for it to build up, and by the time I actually found the bobblehead, I was suffering from advanced radiation sickness, which reduces endurance by 2 and agility by 1. 
With my stats decreased, I had gotten what I had come for, and all I really had to do was leave, but as I mentioned before, it had been a really long time since I had been here, and I was curious to see how Jamie Palabras was getting on, so I backtracked slightly and followed the voices deep underground. Jamie spotted me almost immediately, but he was weak. As for the other half a dozen or so feral ghouls, not so much. With Jamie and his congregation taken care of, I tapped the monolith for good luck and left the building before the voices drove me crazy. With that little adventure over, I was finally ready to head for Smith Casey's, and did so, spotted a deathclaw along the way which really made me question my own mortality. Taking on a bunch of ghouls with a baseball bat is one thing, taking on a deathclaw with a baseball bat is crazy. Almost as crazy as punching a behemoth. The deathclaw didn't follow me, but all of this running away had made me awfully thirsty, so I stopped off at Gerdeshay to buy a bottle of Nuka Cola. Did I say buy? I meant steal. Sierra didn't seem to mind for some reason, not until I stole the ones directly in front of her. She screamed, so I put her to sleep, permanently. With enough Nuka Cola to fill a bathtub, I left and went to rescue Dad. Inside Smith Casey's I hit level 5, increasing lockpick, melee weapons, and science, also choosing the Child at Heart perk. The simulation was the same as always. Radio, pitcher, gnome, pitcher, cinder block, gnome, bottle, commie, invasion. Back in the real world, Dad said thanks, then left to go to Rivet City. Outside Smith Casey's I repaired my bat and encountered three regulators. They weren't really a problem, mostly because they locked onto Dad. As soon as they were dead, he left, and I started walking to Rivet City from the Robco facility, the closest location I had found so far. A short walk east landed me at the Nuka Cola bottling plant, where I hit level 6, increasing melee weapons to 100 and repair, also choosing the Bloody Mess perk. What I learned on the rest of the journey to the scientific tub was raiders with swords are difficult to kill. I've never wanted a gun more in my life. After aiding the Brotherhood with a few mutants, I swam across the river, increased my radiation sickness to critical, which reduced my endurance by 3, agility by 2, and strength by 1. I had never gone this long without Radaway before, and to be honest, it didn't really bother me until it reduced my strength. That was a no-no. I planned to take care of it at Rivet City, but first I wanted to clear the mutants from the Jefferson Memorial to save doing it later. There was a couple of times where I thought I was going to die, especially when dealing with brutes, since they take so many hits to kill. So many, in fact, my bat almost broke, and if it wasn't for the one you can find here, I would have been much more worried. After finding a single pouch of Radaway, which wasn't enough to cure me, but it was enough to bring my strength back up to 10, I cleared the purifier and went to the Rivet City Marketplace to buy all the Radaway they had, and finally get this sickness under control. I did stop off to rescue the captive along the way and almost died in the process. You have no idea how fast I was mashing the button to bring up the Pip-Boy, I could have swore I saw smoke. At Rivet City, Flax supplied me with two more baseball bats and a bunch of stim packs, while Cindy sold me anti-rads. I then did something ridiculously stupid. I consumed the rad away instead of going to the city's doctor and getting him to cure it, which I still had to do because the Radaway I did buy and immediately consumed wasn't enough. To cheer myself up, I bought even more Stimpaks and went to watch the smart people talk. At the memorial, Dad was acting a little strange, never seen him up there before. Inside, I did some work while everyone else held a clipboard and pretended they could read. Dad knew I was onto him, so he unlived himself, and Dr. Lee led me into the sewers, where I cured Gaza's heart condition. Alex Dargan died, and for the first time since making these challenge videos, Daniel Agincourt survived. Elder Lions gave us refuge, and I hit level 7, increasing medicine and repair, also choosing the toughness perk. This time around, I decided to not get power armor training, receive the location of Vault 87, and instructions to head to Little Lamplight, where an alternative entrance to Vault 87 could be found. 
Fast travelling to Smith Casey's, I headed for Lamplight Caverns, trying my best to rescue the Brahmin from the mutants, failed, took their stakes, and tricked McCready into thinking I was his friend. He kindly opened the gate to Murder Pass, and I got chewed up by the mutants. Luckily, I had more than enough stim packs, so my only worry was whether or not the game would respond quick enough and let me use the Pip-Boy before dying. I also came across my first Super Mutant Master, just outside Vault 87. Found you! Here it Inside the vault I hit level 8, increasing repair, and choosing the rad resistant perk. Because although I had a rad suit and could also unlock the door to another rad suit, I was going to try to retrieve the gek using only rad X. Why would I do this you ask? So you don't have to. Getting to the gek wasn't that hard, most of the mutants are alone so you only have to focus on one target, but sometimes there are two and when they're both brutes, things can get a little tense, especially in these small corridors. The best thing to do is remain calm and keep an eye on your health because it does go down quite quickly. As for actually getting the gek, I did pick the lock to the rad suit, took said rad suit just in case I needed it, chugged all the rad X I had collected thus far, and found that the radiation wasn't as much of a threat as I first thought. In fact, I don't think I'll ever have to worry about using a rad suit again. To celebrate this newfound discovery, I lay down in the hopes that Colonel Autumn would join me. He didn't, but he did strip me down and take me hostage. I'm not really into all that, and luckily the president wasn't either. After Eden gave me my things back, I got dressed and hit level 9, increasing everything by a little bit, also choosing the second rank of the Swift Learner perk. With that done, I fought my way through the Enclave soldiers, they were easier than the mutants at Vault 87, so it wasn't long until I was banging Anna Holt and speaking with the big computer. I said, hey, you should stop living. He said, sure, but wouldn't let me leave until I touched his thing. After I had, the door opened and I was free to go, or at least free to fight my way outside. As always, the escape was pretty easy, until reaching the Tesla soldiers, that is. Outside, the base began to explode, and I hit level 10, increasing medicine and choosing the here and now perk, hitting level 11, increasing medicine yet again, and choosing the finesse perk. With that over, I fast traveled to the citadel, the lions roared, and the tin can't became a tin can. Before following Liberty Prime to the memorial, which you definitely should do by the way, I went the other way and swam across the river tried to get inside the purifier much sooner than I should have, couldn't, and began walking the usual path, but this time in reverse. It was eerily quiet, but there were soldiers down the road, including a Hellfire soldier, which took 33 hits to kill. That's a lot. There was also this invisible wall that I couldn't get through, but I could get past by going up and jumping down. I think the invisible walls are checkpoints that once LP is passed through, tells the game to load in the next wave of enemies. Something something frame rate. On the bridge I met back up with the boys and went involuntarily swimming. Reloading I tried jumping down, died, tried again, lived, went voluntarily swimming and hit level 12, increasing medicine to 100 and everything else by a little bit more. Also choosing the cannibal perk. I then followed Liberty Prime, as I should have, all the while hearing the sound of what I think is a ripper. We will not fear the red At the memorial, there was too many enemies to really do any damage without having to stop every two seconds to heal. So as soon as one got close, I shut the door, dealt with them, healed, and repeated the process until the Enclave were through. 
At the rotunda, I hit Colonel Autumn with my wood, did the same to his friends, stepped into the chamber, activated the purifier, and the run was officially complete. So, to answer the question, can you beat Fallout 3 using only a baseball bat? Yes, yes you can. Be sure to show your support by liking the video, and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.